If you think you cannot take off another line, go ahead and do it anyway, comma says Mercedes-Benz chief designer Gordon Wagoner. For instance, a crease that runs along a vehicle's shoulder line is a styling element that defines virtually every current Mercedes, yet it is absent on the new E-Class Coupe. In fact, no Mercedes-Benz since the Bruno Sacoera, 1975-1999, is as minimalist in its surface treatment or as classic in proportions as the next two Doria even so, the car stays true to the design language that was launched with the current S-Class. The front end is punctuated by Mercedes sparkling diamond grille, the side mirrors are mounted on the doors, which feature frameless side glass, and the rear has delicately slim, horizontal taillights with the trunk doubling as a spoiler. This is shaping up to be quite possibly the most beautiful car in its class, and it seems quite a bit larger and more self-confident than the one it replaces. Under the outgoing E-Class Coupe S skin is little more than a rebodied C-Class. Its wheelbase and track were identical to those of the contemporary C Coupe, although the interior was styled to resemble a miniaturized version of the four-door E-Class S cabin. With the new model, the engineers and Sindelf engine have moved the whole car much closer to the E sedan. The new coupe measures 190.2 inches in length, 56.3 inches in height, and 73.2 inches in width 5.2 inches longer, 2.9 inches wider, and 1.5 inches taller than before. The instrument panel is lifted straight from the E-Class sedan, complete with the available dual 12.3 inch displays. The main difference and a quite prominent one concerns the air vents which here are designed to evoke jet turbines. Moreover, coupe customers can opt to delete the push and turn knob of the command infotainment system in favor of a standalone touchpad. Interior space is generous. Up front, there is virtually as much room as in the sedan, while the two individual rear seats offer plenty of space in every direction, even when the front seats are pushed back. It has quite a contrast to the cramped quarters of the C-Class Coupe, and with no center roof pillars and four side windows that can be lowered completely, the cabin feels quite airy. It would be perfect if Mercedes had added a rear center armrest and a more attractive rear console. But perhaps the brand wants to keep a certain distance from the even larger and far more expensive S-Class Coupe. That also could be the reason why no V8 is planned neither for the standard model nor for the hotter AMG version. In the US, Mercedes-Benz will sell an E400 with a 329 horsepower 3.0-liter twin-turbo V6 with rear or all-wheel drive. Above that, there will be a Mercedes AMG model with the 3.0-liter and line 6 that has rated at about 450 horsepower, we suspected one TB called V43, however. Both engines are made with the 9-speed automatics. The red metallic coupe in which we rode was still partially camouflaged, but we were nevertheless invited to take a seat. Unfortunately, the one we had to take was the passenger rest. This E400 formatic is still undergoing final testing, although our impressions are that it's already a fully realized production model. Our ride took place while charging up the snowy Timos jaunt north ramp at near triple digit speeds. It has a fast car, and when the driver changes gears or lifts off the accelerator in Sport Plus mode, there is an audible crackle in the exhaust. While this lesser powertrain is thus tuned to appeal to buyers' base emotions, Mercedes is playing it safe with the assistance systems. Even in Sport Plus mode, the car will allow only modest drift angles. This Benz is constantly monitoring its driver, evaluating and correcting them, just as in the E-Class sedan, the autonomous driving functions are far-reaching and highly capable, albeit conservatively tuned, lest the driver become inattentive at the wheel. The luxury two-door coupe segment has been stagnant for many years, but with the GNU E-Class, it gains a fresh infusion. Quite different in character from the C-Class coupe and positioned well above the Audi A5 and the BMW 4 Series, it almost approaches the level of the BMW 6 Series and the Lexus LC at S larger inside than both but falls short of their available V8 engines. Gordon Wagoner and his design team may have taken a few unnecessary lines off this coupe's exterior but our first, 
quick impression is that almost nothing is missing from this impressive two-door. It will be unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show in January and appear in U.S. showrooms next summer. Summer.